Good morning, everybody. My name is Ian Shepard, and I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services. Welcome to this week's Learn Canadian English live stream. So this is the first one. To, uh, it's today on Monday. The next one will be on Thursday morning. So before we begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that Right Start Newcomer Services conducts business on Chibuktuk, which is how you say Halifax in the Mi'kmaq language. This city is part of the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This means that when settlers came, the indigenous people did not surrender their territory and instead signed treaties with Europeans. As a business, we are committed to upholding these treaties as we continue to build relationships between settlers, newcomers, and Mi'kmaq people. So how's everybody doing this morning? Uh, as usual, you can participate in today's lesson by asking questions in the comments section, answering my questions, just saying hello, um, or you can just watch and listen and maybe pick up some, some English along the way. So uh, how's everybody doing? Say hello if you're watching. Uh, Rodrigo's here. Hey, Rodrigo. Uh, Rodrigo is one of our best students he comes pretty much all the time. He is always participating, and he really uses these classes as an opportunity to practice his English and uh, help other people improve too. So really glad you're back, Rodrigo. Uh, I hope everything's good with you in Chile. Okay, uh, anybody else watching? And if you're watching the replays after, again, feel free to comment, ask questions, answer questions, just as you would as if you were watching live. Um, so Rodrigo says, it's a chilly morning here in Chile. Chile in Chile. Um, yeah, it is the opposite here in Halifax. It's going to be a hot one. I think today is going to be the hottest day of the year so far. They're calling for 32 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot for Halifax. Maybe once or twice a year it gets up to that hot. Um, yeah, it doesn't get to minus 32 either. Uh, Halifax is on the ocean, so doesn't get too hot or too cold, but today is gonna to be a hot one. Uh, it is very humid in Halifax, so we have a lot of moisture in the air and that makes it feel even hotter than usual. So thank you for letting me know that, Rodrigo. Um, anybody else watching, what's the weather like there? What are you up to today? Uh, how's life? Do you have any questions about English? I'd love to hear them. Maybe you've been studying on your own or you have a class or teacher you have any questions, problems, uh, I'd love to hear about them and we can address those in today's class. Okay, so uh, let's get going with today's lesson. So today we're going to talk about driving. Uh, we have a great lesson. We're going to learn some vocabulary related to your car. Uh, so you know what you're talking about if you go to the mechanic, if you have your driving test, you have to know the parts of the car. We're also going to talk about rules, driving rules, we're going to look at some signs, and we're going to practice giving instructions, uh, positive and negative instructions related to driving. So lots planned for today. Hopefully you enjoy today's lesson. If you don't, let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear if you don't find the lessons useful. Why not? Right? How can we make the lessons better? Okay, let's move ahead. And... So here is our outline. We're going to do a little warm up. Let's have a little discussion about driving. Um, we're going to learn some vocabulary, as I mentioned. So the parts of the car, we're going to do a little grammar, giving instructions, and then we're going to practice giving, driving, do's and don'ts. So things you should do when driving, things you shouldn't do. And we're going to look at some signs as well. So let's, let's discuss. So I want to hear from you guys. Question one, uh, as usual, you can answer any of these questions. Just put the number in the comment section. Um, you can answer all of them if you want. So number one, do you drive? 
If so, how long have you been driving? So me, let me think. I do drive. Uh, I like driving a lot. And I've been driving since I was 16. So I am 43, almost 43. Uh, my birthday is pretty soon. So what's that? Uh, 43 minus 16, a long time. So almost, yeah, 27 years I've been driving. So yeah, I got my learner's license back when I was 16. And I've been driving pretty much ever since. When I lived in Taiwan, I wasn't driving a car. Uh, I drove a little scooter. So I guess I took a little break from driving a car and I drove a scooter for about four years while I lived in Taiwan. Uh, second question, how did you learn how to drive? So here in Canada, we have a lot of driver training courses. And I took one in my high school. It was called Driver's Ed, short for Driver's Education. So that helped me uh, learn how to drive safely, reduce my insurance a little bit. So uh, I do recommend a lot of newcomers when they come to Canada. It might be a good idea to take a driver training course. It'll help you pass the test and it may help you save money in the long run on your insurance costs. Because insurance for newcomers is crazy here in Canada. Uh, I've heard some people paying like 3000 a year or more for their insurance. Uh, but over time, that should come down. So if you can get a driving abstract and uh, proof of insurance from another country, that can help you reduce your insurance here in Canada. Okay, so how did you learn how to drive? Also, my dad taught me, uh, but, but that wasn't great because he wasn't a good driver. So he taught me some bad habits. And then when I went to driver's ed, they helped me correct those habits. And I think I'm a pretty safe driver now, knock on wood. Um, yeah. So what kind of driver are you? That's a good question. Are you a safe driver, dangerous driver, careful driver, fast driver, slow driver? Uh, me, I'm pretty average. Sometimes I speed a little bit on the highway, but don't tell the police. Okay. And what is the best or worst thing about driving where you live? Another good question. So. How's traffic? Uh, what are the police like? What's the best thing about driving where you live? Maybe if you're in Germany, you can drive on the Autobahn with no speed limits. Maybe the worst thing is, I don't know, lots of accidents, lots of bad drivers there. So answer those questions. I'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, what is it like driving where you are? So Rodrigo starts. Uh, he's the first one. I have been driving since 2011. So what's that? Like 10 years, Rodrigo. So I think you're a bit younger than me. You've been driving for about 10 years. Okay. Uh, Yosef. Yes, I do drive and I have been driving since almost 30 years. Great. Uh, welcome to today's lesson, Yosef. Uh, I saw Yosef uh, a few weeks back. I gave him my old scooter and he was going to give it to his daughter. Um, I have been driving for almost 30 years. So instead of since, with since, we would say since a year. Like Rodrigo said, since 2011. Okay, but if you want to say a period of time, 30 years, we should say for 30 years. Does that make sense, Yosef? So for a period of time, for 30 years, since a year or a date, since 2011. Okay, good answer though, Yosef. Thank you for answering. And Rodrigo has another answer. I'm a, I am a very careful driver. I often take no risks. That's great. So it's good to be a careful driver. Um, sometimes you might make the people behind you a little angry if you're driving too slow, but it is definitely better than being a dangerous driver. All right, Yosef has another answer. We had a car and I started to practice by taking out the car from our garage and putting it back. I haven't gone to any professional training institute to learn. That's okay, right? You don't always need to. Like I said, maybe you save some money on insurance, but it's up to you whether or not you take that driver training. Uh, I just want to look at your spelling of garage. Garage, that's a good word. How do you spell garage? Not G-U-A-R.
How do you spell garage? Anybody, anybody can spell it. We're all here to learn together. All right, see if you can beat me, I'll spell it myself. Garage, G. Okay, so I beat you to it, garage, G-A-R-A-G-E. That's it, you don't need a U. Uh, G-A-R-A-G-E is garage. And there you got it, Joseph. Okay, great. I knew you had knew how to spell it as well. So uh, next one. So I consider myself a fast driver, but a safe driver. Can you be a fast driver and a safe driver? Depends, right? Depends if you just speed on the highway a little bit. Uh, usually the police don't bother you too much if you're within about 10 kilometers per hour. So if you, here in Nova Scotia, most of the highways are 110 maximum, 110 kilometers per hour max. If you just go a few over, you should be fine. Um, okay, good. And back in Dubai, the worst thing of driving is the traffic, okay. So I've heard Dubai has really bad traffic. Um, here in Halifax, it's not too bad, I find. But the bigger cities in Canada, Toronto, uh, even Vancouver, they have really bad traffic as well. You're welcome for the correction, Yosef. It's my pleasure. Uh, that's why I'm here. And Rodrigo says, here in my country, everyone uses the horn. OK, so the horn is the thing that makes the sound. Uh, it is annoying sometimes. People use it without needs. Maybe let's say without needing to. People use it without needing to. Um, so everybody uses the horn. Again, here in Canada, you know, some people use the horn a lot, but most people uh, only use it when they really need to. Okay, good answer, Rodrigo. Graj, you spelled it correctly. Great. Uh, Carla, hi, good morning, Carla. Welcome to today's lesson. Thank you for joining us. We are talking about driving today. Um, so Yosef says, yes, you can buy maintaining safe distance between two cars, and that's the most important if you are driving fast. I agree, but you know, we have a lot of animals here in Canada. If you drive on the highway, you will see dead animals all down the road. If you hit a deer or even worse, a moose or a bear, you can be in a lot of trouble. So even if you keep distance between you and the car in front of you, if an animal comes out, watch out. I mean, uh, yeah. And also in winter, have to be really careful about driving in winter. We have very slippery conditions. So definitely you want to slow down in the winter time. But I'm not a, I'm not a police officer. So don't worry about it, Yosef. Uh, I won't tell on you. So uh, that's why I'm in Halifax as no traffic or very less traffic. Yes, so uh, we mentioned about the bigger cities. Halifax is not bad at all, especially during COVID. So COVID, there's not a lot of traffic around, uh, luckily. That's one of the good things about COVID. Hey, Indy's here. Hey, Indy, how's it going, man? Uh, I stay within the road rules, plus five kilometers only for me on the highway. Good man, right? I know you're a family man. I know you drive your kids around a lot. So it's really important if you have family in the car to drive safely. And I know, Indy, uh, you follow the rules, I'm sure. Okay, good to see you, Indy. Thanks for joining today's lesson. Okay, great, guys. So great answers. Just wanted to get you guys thinking a little bit. And I wanted to learn a little bit about driving in different countries around the world. So let's move on if that's okay. Uh, so let's talk about the parts of the car. So can you name the parts of the car? I'm going to show you some pictures of my car. See which ones you know. Uh, don't be jealous. I know I have a pretty nice car. It's a 2005 Honda Accord. It's getting pretty old now, but it's been a great car. It's in pretty good shape. It is a little bit dirty, so don't judge me based on the pictures that you're going to see. Uh, Bay is here. Hey, Bay, you're late. That's okay. Uh, you can watch the replay after, but thank you for joining us today. And we are talking about driving. So thank you so much for joining us again. 
Faye is another one of our great students. She's here 98% of the time. Um, she answers all the questions correctly. Her English is really, really good. So I don't know why she needs to study, but maybe she just likes coming, but she has a really, really great English. Uh, okay, we have another comment. So Indy said, I learned from you, Ian. You've taught me a lot about the Canadian way of life when I was starting. Yes, so I met Indy, what was it, Indy, like four years ago, maybe? Um, you guys have been in Canada quite a while. So I met Indy and his wife, and we took a course together while I was teaching the course called Introduction to Nova Scotia. We talked about all this stuff. We talked about buying a car, getting insurance, driving, driver safety, all of that stuff. So Indy's one of those great guys. He's always had he's always had a smile on his face. He's always been kind, happy, and I really, really loved working with them. So it's my pleasure, Indy. Anything I can do to help is my absolute pleasure. Uh, Bay is smiling. Okay, great. And Sadia said, dirty, no issues, blame it on the pandemic. Yes, uh, Sadia, I hope you're doing well. Um, I need to catch up with you guys. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Blame it on the pandemic. Uh, so what is dirty? So I, I'm, I'm not really good. Oh, that's my car. Maybe because I said my car was dirty. Blame it on the pandemic. Yeah, it's the pandemic's fault that I'm too lazy to wash my car. Uh, thank you, Sadia. Hey, Dennis is here too. A uh, humble student of Ian here as well. Wow, it's the old gang here today. Dennis was another client who came to my introduction to Nova Scotia course and also Sadia as well. So yeah, it's like a reunion today. Maybe you guys are off work or something. Um, yeah, maybe it's just a, a slow day at work. Um, and Indy says he came, yeah, 2017 in January. So a little bit over four years. Awesome. Uh, you guys must be close to getting your citizenship or thinking about it, or maybe you already did. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Great. And Sadia, I have my learner's license, LL, learner's license, gearing up for your full driver's license. Okay, awesome. Um, and how's the little uh, bun in the oven? Did your baby come yet? Hopefully soon. Uh, I know it's uh, it's almost due. Okay, great catching up with you guys. Let's move on to the parts of the car. Um, so here we go. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. So we've got four things. Um, again, that's my car. Number one, what is it? Number two, what is it? Three, so under number two, what is the thing on the front or the back of the car? And inside, what is number four? So again, choose one of them, write it in the comment section. If you know all of them, great. This is a chance to practice your vocabulary and your spelling and show off a little bit for, for everybody else. Do you know all the parts of the car? No cheating, no Googling, no translating. Just do your best to, to say the English word. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds to type in your answers. Number one, two, three, and four on this page. And there's no such thing as a wrong answer. Don't feel bad if you get it wrong. It's just part of learning, right? You make a mistake, we fix the mistake, and then you don't make that mistake, hopefully too many more times. Okay, so Rodrigo went first. Number one, tires, very good. So that is a tire, that is my front tire, front left tire. Number two, front light, very close. You're close for number two. Number three is a question mark, you're not sure. And number four is a back seat. So, Rodrigo got number one, and he got number four, but he didn't get two, and he didn't get three. So can anybody help Rodrigo out with that? Uh, Sadia said front wheel, very good. Number two, bumper, or sorry, number three is bumper. So very good, Sadia got number three, B-U-M-P-E-R. It's for bumping into things, like curbs, 
um, other cars when you're parking and it hopefully protects your car when you do that. Yosef got tires. Very good. Sadia also got headlight. So Rodrigo had said front light, but the actual term is headlight. So that is your headlight. Very good. Thank you for straightening that out, Sadia. Uh, Yosef got it too. Headlights. He got bumper. He got rear seat or back seat. We can say both. Like rear seat or back seat is fine. And Rodrigo said, what is the difference between tires and wheels? That is a good question. So if you look here, where are we? Can I draw on this? Okay. So here, the outside part. Can you guys all see that? Great. This is the tire. The middle part here is the wheel. So the wheel is the actual metal part as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and the outside, the rubber part is the tire. So, you know, here in Canada, we have winter tires and we have summer or all season tires. Um, and then you just change the outside part. Uh, you may have you know, it on rims, so the rim is the metal part, but the rubber part is the tire. You change those twice a year, you know, in the fall you change to winter tires, and then in the spring you change back to your summer tires. So does that make sense? Uh, Rodrigo said, thank you. But they're both, they're both part of the car, right? You have your wheels and you also have your tires. And Joseph said, I guess the metal part is called rim. Exactly. It's um, but then there's also part of the wheel as well. So maybe part of the wheel is called the rim. Uh, the rubber part is tires or wheels. Oh, okay, both are the same. Yeah, so as far as I know, the, the rubber part is the tire. The whole thing, including the rim and other metal parts is called the wheel. But, you know, maybe if somebody is a mechanic watching, you can, you can tell us for sure. Okay, so we got all of the vocabulary. Let's just write it down. We said uh, headlight. You can check your spelling. We've got bumper here. And we've got the back seat or the rear, R-E-A-R, -E rear seat. Okay, awesome. Moving ahead. So we've got five here, seven, sorry, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so five is the seat. Which seat is that? Six is the thingy that you turn. Seven is the I guess it tells you the speed. It tells you the speed and how much gas you have and the uh, RPMs. Number eight makes it go. So it's the thing that you step on to go ahead. And number nine, mine doesn't work, but it's what you might listen to in the car. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we have some answers already. Yosef, you got number five. So that is the front seat. Uh, mine needs a good vacuuming. So you got the front seat is number five. What about six? Steering. Okay, so you got part of it. Steering what? Steering what? Steering something. So number six, steering. We use this word before. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Uh, seven, very good. So we might call these your, your instruments. Your odometer says how far you've traveled. So very good word, Yosef. Odometer says how far you went. If it's telling you the speed, it's called the 
bed ometer? Or is it EED? I think it might be EED. Let me just Google it. Yep, it's double E. We pronounce it speedometer, but it's actually spelled speedometer. So speedometer, that's better. Number eight, what makes it go? Uh, did anybody get that? I don't think anybody, oh, there we go. So Nelson, hey, welcome Nelson. Uh, I'm not sure we met before. Nelson got number six. It is your steering wheel. Great, so there's that word wheel again. So this is your steering wheel. Okay, and then number seven, speedometer odometer and there's a couple other things your uh your gas gauge that tells you how much gas you have anyway it's your instrument panel we might call it your instrument panel or your dash and then number eight uh so Sadia got steering wheel uh she was just correcting her spelling there very good uh, Rodrigo got front seat and dashboard. Yeah, we can call it a dashboard. Let's write that down too. Dash or dashboard. Okay, so your dashboard has all of the instruments and all of the controls. What about number eight? The thing that you step on to make you go. So you have one for stopping and one for going. And maybe if you have a, a manual car, you have a clutch. My car is automatic, so I don't have a clutch. Uh, it says petrol, uh, not petrol. Accelerator, sure. Uh, some people might call it an accelerator, but usually in Canada, we call it a mm, mm, mm. We call it a Gas pedal. Gas pedal. So gas is what you put in your car to make it go. We don't really use the word petrol here. And then a pedal is something you step on. So we call it a very close speed pedal. We call it a gas pedal here in Canada. Maybe it's also called an accelerator or accelerometer or something, but we just call it a gas pedal. And then finally, uh, brakes. So good, but spelling is wrong. Uh, the brake, B-R-A-K-E-S. So we would spell it brakes. The brake pedal is in the middle, and then the gas pedal is on the right side. Very good, you guys. You're doing amazing. Uh, remember now, gas pedal. OK, very good, Yosef. So you got it. And then finally, number nine, this is what you might listen to in your car. Mine's broken. It's been broken for about two or three years. That's okay. Um, can just use my phone if I want. So we, this is your radio. Radio, CD player, um, digital, stereo, whatever you want to call it. Okay, great, so we learned some new words. We got front seat, we've got steering wheel, we've got our dashboard with our speedometer and odometer, we've got our gas pedal and brake pedal or brakes, and then we've got our radio to listen to, to have fun. A few more, and then I think that's it. Um, so number 10, the thing that you pull when you're parked on a hill, Number 11, the thing that puts you into gear. Number 12, you have to make sure you wear this when you are driving anywhere. And then finally, in the back, uh, what is that back area in the rear of your car? Yeah, music system. So Yosef says, it's your music system. OK, great. Yeah, that works. Definitely. So number 10, 11, 12, and 13. Do you know these words? Any, 
And if you don't, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're bad at English or stupid because you don't know these words. Just means that you haven't learned them yet, or you have no reason to learn them, right? Maybe you don't even drive. So is it useful learning all these words if you're not planning to drive? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so handbrakes. Yeah, I, I've, some people call it a handbrake. So number 10 could be handbrake. Rodrigo got it too. Handbrake, number 11, not sure. Number 12 is seat belt. Good, seat belt or maybe safety belt. So I like the word seat belt. And number 13 is trunk, for sure. So seat belt and trunk. I hope you guys wear your seat belts. Uh, I know it is law here in Canada. You can get a pretty big ticket if you don't wear your seat belt. And definitely if it's a child not wearing their seat belt, you get in a lot of trouble. Um, so, okay, very good. So you got trunk, you got seat belt. Let's call this number 10 is handbrake or emergency brake. So both are okay. Handbrake is fine. Emergency brake is okay. And then gear handle, not exactly. Uh, seat belt, you got it. Trunk, you got it. Okay, so maybe for 11, we would call it a, not even sure, a gear shifter. That's what I would call it. I would call it a gear shifter, um, automatic transmission something. All right, I'm gonna Google that one too. What's a gear shifter called? Gear selector. There you go. So it says in an automatic transmission, the gear shifter is known as the gear selector. So I'd call it a gear shifter or you could call it a gear selector. Learn something new every day. Um, as you can tell, I'm not really a car guy. I don't know all the correct terms. Uh, I made it gear handle. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. It's your car, right? So gear handle, gear shifter, gear selector, uh, like brake pedal. Okay, smart. So you call it gear handle and brake pedal. Okay, that whatever helps you remember, right? So great job, you guys. So we got handbrake or emergency brake gear shifter or gear selector or handle, as Yosef says. We've got our seat belt and we've got our trunk. And I think, oh, last one, three more. So I had to blank out my number there. I don't want you guys stealing my number. So what is that thing? Number 14, number 15. What is that one for looking behind you? And then finally, I opened the hood and I wanted to show you this thing from my car. Okay, so three last words. What are they? So we learn all of the words related to cars and driving. So plates, yes, this is your license plate or just plate, right? So let's call it license. Also, spelling of license is a little bit different in Canada than it is in America. So when you're talking about your driver's license, we spell it L-I-C-E-N-C-E. -E. So let's call it a license plate or just plate. Uh, number 15, not sure. Side mirror. Okay, very good. So Rodrigo got it. So your side mirror. You could say even passenger side mirror, passenger side mirror. Uh, license plate, very good. And then I just wanted to show you the engine. So I was trying to point at the engine. Maybe it's not exactly the engine, but I just wanted to show you the engine. Uh, I have two cars with the same number, 053. 
that's weird. Uh, it's usually random, right? So when you get your license plate, you are assigned a random number. You have two cars with the same number. Uh, I don't know if they did that on purpose or it just happened that way. Weird. Okay, great. So three more words, license plate, side mirror, and engine. Now I think we know quite a few. We learned quite a few words today related to your car. So this is very useful. Oh, you asked for it. Okay, so you requested that number. Maybe it's easier for you to remember, Yosef. Uh, I didn't know you could ask for it. Anyway, so these words are useful if you're going to a mechanic, right? You say, oh, there's a problem with my wheel, or there's a problem with my engine, or there's a problem with my seat belt, or something like that. So knowing these words can be really useful to have a conversation with somebody who's going to help you fix your car. Uh, another situation is if a police officer comes and they come and say, did you know that your headlight is burnt out? It's good to know what they're talking about, right? So you don't have a lot of confusion. You're able to say, oh, I'm sorry, officer, I'll go get that fixed and hopefully avoid a ticket because tickets can be really, really expensive. Uh, costs you only less than $6. So $6 to get a certain number for your license plate. Maybe it's a good deal if it helps you remember it. Okay, so let's move on. If there are any other words you wanna know, just, uh, just let me know. Next thing I wanted to do is practice a little bit about giving instructions because when we learn how to drive, when we're teaching other people to drive, there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of instructions that you need to be able to follow. Say you're taking a driver training course, you need to understand them. Maybe you're teaching your kids how to drive or your husband or your wife or somebody else you need to be able to give them clear, easy to understand instructions. So just wanted to remind you, when we give instructions in English, we either give positive or affirmative instructions or we give negative instructions. When you're giving instructions in English, don't include the subject you, right? So if I'm telling you, um, open the door, close the door, put on your seatbelt, uh, turn left, turn right, go backwards. I don't say you do that, right? I don't say you put on your seatbelt, you open the door, you close the door. I just say, do it, right? Open the door, close the door, turn left, turn right, yada, yada. When you say negative instructions, so when you give somebody negative instructions, we use don't, usually don't, or maybe a word like never before your main verb. So we use what's called a helping verb to give negative instructions. So I wrote down a few examples. Drive on the right side of the road. Okay, so that's an affirmative, uh, positive instruction. And notice I don't say you. So a lot of students make this mistake and they say, you do this, you do that. Don't say you, we'll just say, do it, right? Drive on the right side of the road. Don't speed. So that would be an example of a negative instruction. Don't speed. And then here's a negative instruction with the word never. Never drink and drive. So never drink alcohol and drive your car. So giving instructions can be really useful, right? It can be really useful for, you know, driving tests, helping somebody learn how to drive, or it could be at work, right? You wanna give your uh, employee some instructions, right? Um, you wanna tell them what to do. You wanna tell maybe your children what to do or a family member. So giving instructions, understanding instructions can be really, really useful. Um, so Yosef said, I changed my car plate numbers. He said he meant to say car. You changed your car plate numbers. Sure, you, you have that right. It, it costs a little bit of money, but you can change your license plate numbers if you want. So let's get a little practice. So I want you guys to practice some do's and don'ts about driving. So what are some things you must do what are some things that you should not do or cannot do when you're driving? So 
try to give me an example of each. So I gave you some examples here, drive on the right side of the road. Here in Canada, we drive on the right. I know some countries drive on the left. And then a negative one, don't speed or never drink and drive. So, oh, Shohili's here. Hi, Shohili, good to see you again. Thank you for joining. Um, Shohili was my student, sheesh, uh, seven, eight years ago, something like that, quite a while ago. I know she's been in Canada a really long time. She was my English student way back, uh, way back when. Okay, so think of a positive and a negative instruction related to driving and put it in the chat, please. What should you do? What should you not do? If you can't think of any, it's okay. I have some photos that will help you think of, of some, uh, some instructions. Okay, I'll give you a second if I don't see any answers. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to cover was some signs, right? Signs give you instructions as a driver. Right? It tells you what you can do, what you cannot do. Uh, so it is really important that you understand the signs before you try to take your driving test because you won't pass if you don't know all of the signs. Rodrigo, very good. So this is what I was looking for. Some instructions to be safe when you're driving. So Rodrigo said, slow down on, let's say on the highway. O-N. So we always say on the highway instead of in the highway. We do say in the road, but on the highway. We could have a whole lesson about prepositions. Slow down on the highway, slow down in the road. I guess in the road, yeah. If you're walking across the road, you would be in the road. Uh, you've got another one. Great, Rodrigo. Uh, never park on the left side of the street. Yes, you can get a ticket for that. So never park on the left side of the street. Uh, no parking. Are you sure? Are you sure that's a no parking sign? You might want to uh, study a little bit more before your driving test there, Sadia. So drive straight. Yeah, drive straight if, you, if there's no turns in the road. Uh, very good, Nelson. Great. And Shahili, I think you meant follow instead of flow. Follow. How do you spell follow, Shahili? Follow the rules of the road. But that makes sense to me. Uh, just uh, your, your spelling of follow. F O. No stopping. I don't know, Sadia. I don't know. Maybe you need to look at your book again. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, no rush. Yeah, maybe don't rush. Don't rush. Follow the rules of the road. This one. So if you know the signs in Canada, uh, a lot of countries share the same signs. You know, here we have the same signs as in the U.S. pretty much. This sign says what? What does this sign say? Uh, please help Sadia so she can pass her driving test. I'll write it here. This one actually means do not enter. Do not enter this way because it's probably a one-way street. The traffic is coming this way. Do not go in the other way. So this is a do not enter sign. Uh, dead end close, kind of like a dead end. So this one means do not enter. Big red circle with a white line through it, do not enter. You know, it's been a while since I've taken my driving test, so I could be wrong about some of these, but I'm pretty sure this one is a do not enter sign. Okay, so hopefully that will help you, Sadia, when you go to do your driving test. What about this one? Uh, 
what is it saying to us, right? What instruction is it giving to a driver? So this one is saying, good, basically turn left, keep left. You can only go left, right? You can't go right. So maybe it's a one-way street or there's only one way to go. Um, straight right turn, maybe it's a, looks left. I don't know, maybe you guys are seeing it the other way, but maybe left turn, right? So turn left, that would be very good. Okay, great. Next one. What is the instruction that they're giving the driver here? Uh, you probably noticed I just went out this morning in my neighborhood and took some photos. What are they telling you here? Okay, great. Rodrigo's got a great answer here. Uh, student zone, slow down. Good. So slow down. Watch out, right? Watch out for students or children. Uh, very good. Sadia, slow down. It's a crossing zone. So there's a crosswalk. So the crosswalk is the has the lines on the street. It's where people are allowed to legally cross. Slow down. Students crossing, people are crossing, school zone, very good. Um, and here in Canada, when school is in session, so Monday to Friday, you know, eight o'clock to about three or four o'clock, you have to slow down very slowly. So here where I live in Halifax, regularly, if you can drive 50, you have to slow down to 30 kilometers an hour. So really, really, really slow and you have to stop for school buses and anybody crossing the street. Hey, Viviana, uh, I'm not sure I know you, Viviana. Welcome to the lesson. It is a school zone, absolutely. So we need to stop, we need to slow down. Uh, school has one L, S-C-H-O-O-L, just like Nelson wrote. But very good answer, Vivian, you are correct. Let's move ahead. Okay, this is a good word. Looks kind of like the other sign we saw with the red and white. That one was a circle. This one is a triangle, an upside down triangle. What does it mean? Uh, this is for you, Sadia, so you are able to pass your driving test. Uh, school crosswalk, exactly. So that was for the last one. Shohili, that was a school crosswalk. We need to watch out for children. We need to stop when they're crossing. We need to slow down. This one, this is a very important word related to driving. It starts with why. So I'll give you a clue, it starts with why. Maybe that's why it's shaped like that, because it kind of looks like a Y, right? Upside down triangle looks like a Y. Uh, Careful at crossing, not necessary to stop. Give the preference. Okay, so you got a good description there, Rodrigo. Be careful, so be careful. It is not necessary to stop. It's not a stop sign, right? We have a stop sign also. Give the preference. So let's say give right of way. So we have this expression. Uh, I'm sure you have the same expression in Spanish. Here we call it the right of way. So the person in the road who's already driving that way has the right of way. You have to wait for them. 
So uh, I believe somebody has the exact word. Shohili has it. Very good. So this is a yield sign. Yield is exactly what Rodrigo says. Be careful, slow down, look. And then if there's nobody there, you can go. But the correct term is called yield. Yield to other traffic. Yield to pedestrians. Or who are the people who are crossing the street. So very good, you guys. Great, Shohili. It is a yield sign, as you said. Excellent. And Rodrigo understands what it means. So that's basically what yield means. You guys are amazing. Uh, how are we for time? We got a few minutes left. Stop sign, everybody knows that one. Uh, I don't think you need to write this one. Stop means stop. You have to fully stop before you go. Uh, make sure you check both directions, but you can get a ticket if you don't stop completely. Okay, what is this saying? So what instruction is it giving to the driver? Uh, exactly, Shohili got it. The last one was a stop sign. Uh, we just skipped ahead for time's sake. So what is it telling us, right? You're close, perking. You're very close, Shahili. And Rodrigo says, here in my country, you get a ticket even if you stop a few after the stop sign. So a few, a few feet, a few inches, uh, you get a ticket even if you stop after a few. Yeah, I mean, here you have to stop. You're supposed to stop before the line, right? You're not supposed to go over the line, but I see that happen all the time. Okay, Sadia got it now. Now it's no parking. So no parking or don't park here, right? You can't park anywhere around this sign. Uh, here, no parking on both sides of the street. Yeah, well, actually it's, it's one side of the street, but both sides of this sign. So to the before the sign and after the sign, but it's all on the same side of the street, uh, Nelson. Okay, great, no parking. Carolina, nice to meet you, Carolina. Uh, I don't remember seeing you here, but welcome to today's lesson. And Rodrigo, even a few centimeters. If you go a few centimeters too far, you get a ticket. They sound very, very strict in Chile. Here, the police officers, you know, give you a break. They maybe give you a warning. You, you don't see all that many police officers around here. So no parking on this block, at least this section of street. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, let's, let's make this one, let's do this one and one more. So what instruction is it giving to us? Uh, you're welcome, Carolina. You're very welcome. I'm happy to help. So uh, let's do this one and one more. What is this one saying? It says maximum 50. What is it telling us? You're right. So that's what it says, maximum 50. But what is the instruction that's that it's giving to us? And what will happen if we go over 50? Okay, so the maximum speed limit is 50. Yes, we use the term speed limit. So the speed limit is the maximum speed you are allowed to drive. Shohili, you got it too, maximum 50 speed. So it's telling us don't drive faster than 50 kilometers per hour. So don't exceed, exceed means go over 50 kilometers per hour. And Viviana got it too. Uh, Viviana drive at maximum 50 kilometers, exactly. Uh, and Carolina said you can drive with the limit of 50 kilometers per hour. You guys are all correct, right? So this is the maximum, don't go above it, but you should drive at this speed. And you can drive a little bit less than that. You can drive 40 if you want and you won't get into any trouble. Okay, let's do... Okay, how about this one? That's a good one too. 
you can tell it's a nice day here, nice and sunny and hot. It actually said there's going to be thunderstorms today, if you can believe it. Um, we'll see if that happens. So last one, what is this sign telling us? And then we're going to wrap up today's le lesson. Okay, I don't see anybody answering this one yet. Maybe everybody's going for lunch. Uh, attention with the man in bicycle. Okay, very good, Carolina. Maybe let's say pay attention. Pay attention. So pay is the verb. And then pay what? Pay attention to the man on the bicycle. Uh, it could be a woman, right? It could be, let's say, um, pay attention to bicyclers or people riding bicycles. Pay attention to people riding bicycles and also give them enough space. So leave space for bicyclers or don't go too close to bicyclers. Okay, so there's a lot of instructions in this one. It's telling us a lot of things. Uh, Rodrigo said, keep distance with bikers. Maybe keep distance from bikers, exactly. So that's exactly what it's telling us. Bicycles on the lane, keep your distance. Okay, very good. So this is a bicycle lane. Good word, Nelson. So a lane is a, an area for bicyclers to use, separate from the road. Um, Carolina says, keep the distance with the bicycle. Very good. So bicycle, B-I-C-Y-C-L-E, but you almost got it. Very good, Carolina. So it's all kind of the same thing. We're all saying the same thing. Sadia said it's a bicycle path. Um, path is usually separate from the road, but lane, lane I think is the right word here. And pay attention to people on bicycles. Very good. So I think that's it. Um, this one is watch out for people playing, children playing because it's close to a playground. And I think that's all that we had for today. So we did a lot today. We talked about driving. You guys shared your experience driving in Canada and other countries. We learned parts of the car. So I think there were 15 or 16 words that we learned about the car. That'll be useful for when you're getting repairs, when you're doing your driving test. Giving instructions, so this was really good. We we practiced some positive and negative instructions. Uh, do this, don't do this. Remember, we don't say you when we're giving instructions. We just say what we want the person to do. And then we looked at the signs and we looked at some driving do's and don'ts. Uh, don't drive over the speed limit, watch out for bicycles, all of those things. Um, so we learned a lot today. And remember, my business is called Right Start Newcomer Services. My name is Ian. We also do English classes. If you want some English lessons, you can get in touch with us. Here's our website. Here is our email address. And if you just want to say hi, feel free to send me an email too. And any English question, I would be happy to answer those by email. Uh, Sadia says, yes, Lane is appropriate. OK, great. And Rodrigo says, thank you, Ian. Great lesson today. See you on Thursday. Thank you so much for coming and learning with us, asking questions, answering questions. It's really a lot of fun. So today, I think we set a record. I saw 12 people at one time watching today's lesson. So that is our record. I'm very happy that more and more students keep coming. And it's always great to see students that I haven't seen in a couple years, like Indy and Yosef and Shohili. So thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, you're very welcome, Viviana. Thank you for joining us. And yes, definitely I'll see you in the next class, which will be Thursday. Thursday is Canada Day. Uh, we have a lot to learn about Canada. This year is, is kind of a different Canada Day um, because some, some things have happened recently that we'll talk about on Thursday. We will celebrate, but there's a lot of things we need to discuss as well. So 
you're welcome, Carla. Great, I'm glad you enjoy our classes, Sadia, and you're very welcome, Shohili. So take care, everybody, and hope to see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.